So why is representation important? Well, with one in every 54 Americans being autistic, one in every 54, if you are doing a show that in any way involves autism, you better be casting an autistic actor or hiring an autistic writer or director because disability is still not thought about when we talk about diversity and that needs to change. We don't just want to be audience members. We want to be employed. We want to be active parts of the conversation about autism. We want to help shape the stories about us from the inside, just like any other minority group would want to have a hand in telling the public stories that shape public understanding about their group. Young people with disabilities in this country need to see a positive role model who will tell them that if you are different, if you access the world differently, then we need you. The world needs you. Excluding people with disabilities from stories that are entirely about disability unfortunately doesn't help to accomplish this. The point of storytelling is to connect us with people we otherwise wouldn't come in contact with, to bring us life experiences that we don't already have. That is why diversity in the arts matters. Inclusion in the arts matters because it leads directly to inclusion in life. If even movies entirely about autism can't include autistic people thoroughly and directly from the inside, that just goes to show that we still have so much amazing, incredible work to be done. As the first autistic actor on the spectrum to play Christopher, and one of the first autistic actors to play any autistic character ever, I got to show all of the business leaders in the audience, all the business leaders that saw my show, that they can hire us, that we can do professional work at the highest level, that we get the job done, and that they have no reason to discriminate against developmental disabilities. And to those of you watching this who are autistic, or who are different in any way, what I ask of you all today is this. Know yourself well. Know yourself well enough to understand that your differences are your strengths. Be brave, jump in head first even when you aren't sure, and be brave enough to advocate for yourself when you need something. Will you fail? Of course, sometimes. But will it be worth it? Yes. If I hadn't been brave and taken leaps I was afraid to take, I would have never gotten the chance to be on stage in the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. So please be brave, ask for what you need, and trust that sometimes if you leap, the net will be up here. Now go be incredible, and more than anything, be you, regardless of what Sia says. This month, Sia releases her new film, Music, about a non-vocal autistic woman played by the non-disabled Maddie Ziegler. Now, this is nothing new. We know that of the dismally few disabled roles that exist, 95% of them are currently played by non-disabled actors, despite the fact that 20% of the population is disabled according to the census, and one out of 54 people are autistic. So, if this is the norm, why is it such a big deal? Well, first let's look at Sia's response to the autistic community, and then let's look at the real world difference authentic representation makes in employment in industries all across the country. So Sia clapped back on Twitter at any professional autistic actress that dared to tweet to her that neither they nor any of the professional autistic actresses they knew had been auditioned. Sia tweeted back to them, well, maybe you're just a bad actor. Now, I know how this feels. I was the first autistic actor to play Christopher Boone in the Tony Award winning play The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And this also made me one of the first autistic actors to get to play any autistic role ever professionally, dating back to Rain Man, I Am Sam, Atypical, and all the way to The Good Doctor. When I was advocating for autistic actors to be auditioned for the role of Christopher, I was told many times that it simply would not be possible for an autistic actor like myself to play the role of Christopher Boone. That it was a big show with big words. That it was a hard role. I was told so many times that the reason no autistic actors had been cast in the role previously was simply that there were no talented autistic actors. I mean, this is a lie. This is a myth and it is damaging. I am a talented autistic actor who has been told my whole life to my face the exact same words that Sia tweeted to the autistic community. And I'm not alone. There are so many incredibly talented autistic actors. I mean, but why take my word for it? After being cast in Curious Incident, the same people who told me that it couldn't or even shouldn't be done, they changed their minds. When I played the leading role in Curious Incident, the New York Times said, 
Mr. Rowe plays Christopher with an agile grace, an impish humor, and a humanizing restraint. On Broadway, where the play was a Tony Award winning hit, it ran eight times a week, with two actors alternating the demanding role of Christopher. Mr. Rowe, thought to be the first openly autistic actor to play the role, does all nine shows a week. When I got to play the title character in the Tony Award winning play Amadeus, the Wall Street Journal said, buy your tickets now, then come back and finish reading this review. I don't know that I've ever seen a better small screen version of a live stage performance. Mickey Rowe giving a madly zany performance as Mozart. He reminded me at times of a young Jerry Lewis, a triumphant demonstration, artistically successful in every way. And they weren't alone. The reviews kept coming. I am a better actor because of, not in spite of my autism. Autistic people use scripts every day. We use scripting for daily situations that we can predict the outcome of and stick to those scripts. My job as an autistic person is to make you believe that I'm coming up with these words on the spot, right? That this is spontaneous. That the first time this conversation has ever happened in my life. And this is also my job on stage as an actor. For instance, at a coffee shop, I might say, hi, how are you doing today? Can I please have a small coffee? Thank you so much. And then if it seems like more conversation is needed, I can say, well, has it been busy today or slow? Now, regardless of what the barista says, if they say, yes, it's been busy or no, it's been slow, I can then say, oh yeah, what, do you like it better when it's busy or when it's slow? Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Always stick to the script. It makes things infinitely easier. Or playing Edmund in King Lear. Wherefore should I stand in a plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me? When my dimensions are as well compact, my mind as generous and my shape as true, it's really no different. They're lines I've learned, but I say them often, trying to make you believe that they are mine, particular to this specific moment. With autism comes a new way of thinking, a fresh eye, a fresh mind, literally a completely different wiring of the brain. Now, I know what it's like to be really good at something and still overlooked simply because of stigma and bias. Being in front of an audience of 500 or even 5,000 people is very easy for me because the roles are incredibly clear, logical, and laid out. I'm on stage, you're sitting in the seats watching me. I'm playing a character and that is what you want, expect, and are paying for. The conversations on stage are scripted and much better written than the ones in my real life. On the street is where conversations are scary. Those roles aren't as clear. Sure, there are lots of things working against me at any given time. Look, for example, 85% of college graduates on the autism spectrum are unemployed. I'm gonna repeat that again for the people in the back. 85% of college graduates who are on the autism spectrum are unemployed. Now this isn't because we are less capable, but largely because of social stigma and expectations other people like Sia have before ever even working with us. Like the fictional character Sia attempted to bring to life in her movie, I was non-vocal. I know what it feels like to be autistic because it's my lived experience every single day. I was non-vocal throughout my earliest years and it is such a damaging misconception that non-vocal autistic people don't speak simply because they are not smart enough. Look, we live in an inherently ableist society that uses the word dumb interchangeably with the word stupid. But when you take a moment to think critically about it, you realize that what society tells you is excess, uh, excess, acceptable. You realize that just as blind means cannot see and deaf means cannot hear, dumb actually means cannot speak. I'm here to tell you that although I couldn't speak, I definitely was not stupid and I still understood everything everyone else was saying. And this is the case for most non-vocal autistic people. Do you think that Stephen Hawking was stupid since he could not speak without the use of an assistive device? Of course not. You recognize that he was one of the greatest intellects in modern human history while also being unable to speak without an assistive device. Just please extend that same understanding and courtesy to non-vocal autistic people. So why is representation important? 
Well, with one in every 54 Americans being autistic, one in every 54, if you are doing a show that in any way involves autism, you better be casting an autistic actor or hiring an autistic writer or director because disability is still not thought about when we talk about diversity and that needs to change. We don't just want to be audience members. We want to be employed. We want to be active parts of the conversation about autism. We want to help shape the stories about us from the inside, just like any other minority group would want to have a hand in telling the public stories that shape public understanding about their group. Young people with disabilities in this country need to see a positive role model who will tell them that if you are different, if you access the world differently, then we need you. The world needs you. Excluding people with disabilities from stories that are entirely about disability unfortunately doesn't help to accomplish this. The point of storytelling is to connect us with people we otherwise wouldn't come in contact with, to bring us life experiences that we don't already have. That is why diversity in the arts matters. Inclusion in the arts matters because it leads directly to inclusion in life. If even movies entirely about autism can't include autistic people thoroughly and directly from the inside, that just goes to show that we still have so much amazing, incredible work to be done. As the first autistic actor on the spectrum to play Christopher, and one of the first autistic actors to play any autistic character ever, I got to show all of the business leaders in the audience, all the business leaders that saw my show, that they can hire us, that we can do professional work at the highest level, that we get the job done, and that they have no reason to discriminate against developmental disabilities. And to those of you watching this who are autistic, or who are different in any way, what I ask of you all today is this. Know yourself well. Know yourself well enough to understand that your differences are your strengths. Be brave, jump in head first even when you aren't sure, and be brave enough to advocate for yourself when you need something. Will you fail? Of course, sometimes. But will it be worth it? Yes. If I hadn't been brave and taken leaps I was afraid to take, I would have never gotten the chance to be on stage in the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. So please be brave, ask for what you need, and trust that sometimes if you leap, the net will be up here. Now go be incredible, and more than anything, be you, regardless of what Sia says.